And thank you to you all for being so numerous today. I was impressed uh, looking at the data of uh, the invitation uh, received uh, and the people coming today. I've understood uh, that we are more than 2,000 physically present for this uh, 3D Experience Forum 2016 in Japan. And I know that there are over 1,000 people that are connected through streaming. Thank you very much. I would like to use my speaker time today to share with you a few insights on uh, uh, a phenomenon that is affecting, if you want us, that I call the age of experience. And especially, I would like to share with you how the age of experience uh, is transforming uh, the way that we discover, we design, we fabricate, uh, and even the way that we market our product and services uh, forever. It is a matter of fact uh, that the age of experience is impacting uh, our business model, whatever is the industry that we are active in, and it is therefore transforming uh, as well the economic model of entire nation. That is because uh, the age of experience uh, has brought to us uh, a new way of thinking. Actually, it is the need of thinking beyond the usual business way that uh, we were supposed to apply in uh, the industrial economy. Because the products are no longer enough. And whatever the customers we are serving, those customers are requiring a different type of output from us. They are requiring experiences. The way of thinking uh, that we were adopting before, where we were into just uh, the production and the manufacturing of goods, it is no longer enough to ensure that we are attractive in the marketplace uh, against our competitors. This is the reason why, at the SOS system, we have developed uh, a methodology that we call experience thinking. Experience thinking uh, is very simple, actually, because uh, it's the methodology of thinking in terms of transforming not only our product into an experience, but in making attention in transforming every single step of the consumer journey and therefore our go-to-market in our industry into step of experiences. I think that one of the easiest uh, examples that I can give you is that of the Tesla automotive company. When Tesla uh, created the, the electrical vehicle, the electrical car, they were not uh, just inventing a product that was uh, engineered to be electrical, but actually they invented a disruptive business model that is that of being a software platform on four wheels. That is exactly what Tesla meant to do, to provide the drivers not just with an eco-sustainable car being electrical, but an ecosystem of services that were delivered through the embedded software platform that the driver could have access to. That is the very first step, if you want, of changing the experience and not just delivering a product, but they did even more. They have innovated throughout the whole consumer journey. They chosen not to be distributed and therefore the buying experience was not a debt of car dealership. They innovated wanting to be distributed only online. Experience thinking, it is the typology of business thinking that is required in this disruptive digital era where we need to innovate not only at the product level but at every single step of the consumer journey to ensure that the value that we are creating upstream, it is really delivered at the ultimate consumer. There is something more, actually, that is disrupting our, our business. That is the fact that experiences in this digital era are not just regular experiences. They must be connected experiences. I think that we all know the terminology of Internet of Things. It exists since 20 years. Why the hell we are all speaking of Internet of Experience just now? It's simply because the meaning of Internet of Experience has changed from being a geeky type of concept to being an experience concept, which is the reason why we speak about the Internet of Experience. What is important is not just to model, create, simulate and operate an intelligent object. What is important for our business is to deliver to our customer connected experiences. Which means that as creators, as manufacturers, we need to ensure 
that not only we are capable of creating, modeling, and simulating a smart object, but to provide experiences through what I call the experience layers. It is much more important the understanding of the data that are coming from the object when they are in usage, and therefore the analytical uh, exercise that we need to do in order to understand the behaviors of our user through the connected object. Which is the reason why the 3D Experience Platform doesn't uh, just provide you with the modeling layer, as I call it, but actually to the stream of connection till the level of the experience layer through a different portfolio of application that are made on purpose in order to provide you with analytics of things, dashboarding of things, and even programming of those things based on the understanding of the data that are connected, or if you want, recuperated through the smart object. <coughs> so everything in the age of experience is disrupted. And uh, even uh, those domains uh, that we master in every single industry, how to design, how to manufacture, what is the scientific application that I need to have into my R&D, and even marketing is having a new meaning. I would like to go through a few examples of wh what do I mean, because they are important insight to understand uh, how do we need uh, really to innovate in, the, ca in uh, uh, the age of experience. The very first one is uh, design. We think that design is about uh, shaping an object, of doing a style to an object, or actually creating a behavior through sensor of an object, or even doing a formulation in case we are into a science-based uh, type of company. That is wrong, meaning that uh, that is the key basic, that is no more true. Today, design is the business plan. Let me give you an example. Apart from Tesla that we have already discussed a little bit about, I would like you to know what is uh, the effect that the age of experience has made uh, on consumer goods like uh, Techno Gym, which is uh, a worldwide uh, renowned, I would say, sport equipment uh, manufacturer, on uh, Nike, which is, uh, if you want, a sportswear company, or even on Procter & Gamble through Oral-B, which is uh, a simple electric toothbrush. Those guys has understood that in the age of experience, the most important things to do is not to provide a product that is competitive enough because it is speeding at the level that I want if I'm using a techno gym. It is soft and comfortable if I'm using a Nike shoe. Or is it actually simply brushing my teeth if I use Oral-B? That is the key basic. And the benefit instead that the consumer are looking for in the age of experience, it is no more the technical product innovation, but it is the connected experience that they are obtaining. Design is the new business plan because every single object today must become a portal, a way of delivering, if you want, additional experiences. Technogym is actually selling uh, the sport equipment uh, to every single hotel in the world. If you go in the west in, uh, at the fourth floor at the fitness center, you will find out uh, that actually the majority of the techno gym equipment are there. But what is for me as a consumer the difference of using a techno gym versus another and therefore privileging to have an abonnement to a sport club that is using a techno gym versus another brand is the fact that techno gym has parallelized its business model through the invention of a software development platform. They have Android developers that are creating fitness application and they have opened up an app store from where I can choose the type of program that I want. And in the moment that I go throughout the world, I enter into the fitness center, and the techno gym equipment is recognizing me and reprofiling their own program based on what I have bought on the techno gym app store. They have transformed their business model from a sport equipment manufacturer to a platform business model parallelizing the monetization of their business through the selling of the equipment and the selling of the application online. It is the same example on Oral-B, an electric toothbrush that today is not only washing my teeth in an electric way, but because of a software platform and a marketplace provides me different type of application. The sensors are capturing the behaviors, my behaviors. How do I wash my teeth? 
How long do I wash my teeth? And what are the imperfections, if you want, of my smile? The analysis of the data get into the platform, and the PNG guys are actually looking at all the data and select or pre-select, if you want, the type of application to send me through the toothbrush. These type of applications are not created by Procter & Gamble, but by an ecosystem of dentists and, special, uh, and uh, specialized people, if you want, in dental care, that are actually selling their application through the platform of Oral-B. Again, there is the parallelization of the business, the object that is the regular output, that is becoming a connected uh, application that is opening me a portal towards an app, 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 app store from where I can select, if you want, the type of application I do prefer. Design, in the age of experience, is the business plan. We are no more designing object, we are designing the ultimate experience that we are going to provide our customer with. There is a second phenomenon that is actually getting discussed a lot. If science is boring, or was boring, this is no more the case. Science in the age of experience is fashionable. Probably the sexiest date that I could have would be with a scientist. If someone would tell me what is your preferred man today, it would be a scientist. And why so? Because scientists today are cool. They are no more the person that are into alambics, if you want, and experimenting all by themselves. They are becoming an important tribe that are really pushing ahead the innovation. Every single R&D in every single industry is getting informed or getting organized in order to represent the majority of the natural science despite being mechanical industry. Why so? Because of the material science, for example. But it is even more, the phenomenon is getting from natural science to social science, where scientists are the more and more in the need to back up their research and experimenting through natural scientists, therefore psychologists, anthropologists, sociologists, and economists. Why so? Let me give you an example. When anthropologists get together with uh, chemists and uh, bi uh, biologists, they analyze, if you want, a world that is completely different from what we think or we have today. If the population uh, and going ahead into this era, we will need the more and more recyclable materials, the ultimate experience that we would like to have as people and citizens of the world is that we will have not only recyclable material by default, but we will actually be capable of decreasing or zeroing, if you want, the waste of material in the manufacturing output. Is it feasible? Well, this is exactly what the anthropologists have suggested and what scientists to which we are collaborating are trying to do through biomimicking, if you want, what our biology or our body is already doing. Up there, you see one of the videos that is our bones. So when we break a bone, we are capable of auto repair, isn't it? So we break our bones, the platelets in the blood the clog, if you want, immediately the part that is getting breaked, and after a several time, it makes uh, us again with a perfect bone. Because of this principle, three types of material are under study. The very first one is metal. Every time that we scratch our body, uh, if you want in the real life, so we scratch our skin, it, something happens. Imagine that the biologists have reconducted into the experiment of the laboratory exactly the same things when the body that is scratched is not mine, but is a body car of the car. Therefore, the next time that someone uh, making a parking, if you want, will uh, damage the surface or the varnish of the car, there will be a metal that actually is going to get out or reconstruct the surface because it's been bioengineered to be uh, to act exactly as our skin would act. The second example, which is the, uh, the, the video that you see in the middle, is on a different type of material, that is an elastomer. 
An elastomer it is an elastic uh, material, so a, a type of rubber. When you cut a type of rubber, actually the molecules get inside the both parts, left and, and right. In order to get reconnected, something needs to happen. The molecular bioengineering of what it would happen to something elastic in our body, what is elastic in our body, tendons, for example, has been completely reconstructed in laboratory in order to happen on elastic material as well. But the most science fiction of all is when we create not just a scratch or a cut in our body, but where there is a hole. Imagine that you get burned and actually there is no more matter that needs to be reconstructed because it lacks the matter inside. A polymer has been bioengineered to act exactly like in this case. The matter is missing and the molecules get together in order to recreate materials. We are recreating a life, actually. So that is the importance of science. In this age, it is no more science just for discovering things that have probably not even an application for the next 25,000 years, as it was at the time of Socrates or Galileo. Science today is thought and it is prepared with the help of economists, the help of anthropologists and sociologists who wants to create an impact and an economic output. Otherwise, science or pure research won't be sustainable anymore. The third subject it is how manufacturing is changing. Kajia San was already explaining some of the phenomena, but let me tell you that today manufacturing, it is not just the fact of how am I going to improve the productivity of my plant or my supply chain optimization, whether I am a discrete, I am a process manufacturer, whether batch, continuous, or even add additive, and therefore through 3D printing. The real uh, big problem of manufacturing today is to have a vision d'ensemble. So actually a big picture view of how do I need to make the things different in order to have the best output. It could be time, it could be cost, it could be waste of material. That is why I say that manufacturing is gaming. What we need in order to have this big picture view is to think to our company and our manufacturing facilities as a console. You know the Xbox, so if you want, while gaming, you need to have an environment which is a 3D environment, and then you have a cockpit to manage what are the different characters if you want in your game. Think of your manufacturing facilities in the same way. The 3D experience platform provides a 3D experience manufacturing environment that actually visualizes the way that you can model, simulate, and even operate, if you want, your manufacturing and supply chain throughout the screen. That is where the future is going, and it is much more than digital manufacturing, because it is a mix of virtual and real, through a cockpit that will permit every of our customer to create a what-if scenario in order to optimize the supply chain. Last is the phenomenon of marketing. I wanted to play, if you want, a little bit on what uh, uh, marketing is. And marketing, actually, it is for sure being defined in 2,000 or millions of different ways. But the reality is that marketing is today, in the age of experience, addictive. It is worse than a drug, I would say. And the dealer, by definition, in each of the company, must become the CEO. That is the reason why I say each CEO has to become a pusher. Why marketing has to become addictive? Because creating experience, as you have seen, it is not a matter of engineering a product. An experience must be thought by a tribe of different persons. And this tribe of different persons usually get inspired by a management process that it is defined a marketing management process. Marketers in the age of experience uh, have the role, if you want, to drive the value creation of the, prod of the company. Because only marketers can assess, uh, can inform and inspire the different function, and lastly, have, are the last controller of that the value creation that has been created upstream is actually delivered to the consumer. Think to 
the consumer journey that needs to be transformed in experience step, this is not a matter of engineering. This is a matter of business thinking. So when I, see, I say marketing is not a marketing in terms of function, it is the marketing management process. Therefore, marketing myopia, as I call it, is no more acceptable. Now, I would like to conclude on the fact that uh, all this phenomenon that we are witnessing, and I'm pretty sure that in any industry that today you represent, uh, you have heard about, uh, and probably we have already been working towards, uh, it is a phenomenon that is requiring, if you want, a different uh, type of platform. It is not uh, just a matter of what is the best uh, solution, IT solution, for doing A, B, C, or D. First of all, in order to apply to the new economy model, we need to have a platform that actually it is no more just a, a connection of more or different solution, but it is, a, if you want, a native environment that has been designed to provide us with a different scenario. The scenario of open innovation, a product platform, that of a scientific platform, that of an analytical platform, there are many platforms in the 3D experience uh, uh, platform, and it is being done in this way in order to ensure that we can accompany the industry and the 12 different sectors in this changing time that I call the age of experience. I would like to show you a two minutes video that makes a sum up of what is the 3D experience platform and how from the upstream thinking till the level of marketing can provide the solution to the industry. Can we launch the video? In the age of experience, products are no longer enough. Businesses have to think about which experiences will become the new innovation stream for their companies. Experience thinking is a framework for innovation to capture insights and expertise from across a business's entire ecosystem Imagine business leaders having at their fingertips a snapshot of the entire market, trends, needs, and opportunities in an intuitive and visual environment. In this example, corporate strategy can drill down into revenue and cost structure from company CRM and ERP data, identify a product quality issue, then correlate with external market data to improve the design. After the business need is identified, R&D can create a new program where designers, mechanical and simulation engineers, and suppliers will collaborate in a unified environment to create the new product. Integrating manufacturing and operations with product design. Supply chain and manufacturing professionals can now plan, execute, and optimize their global industrial operations and extended supply chains, running optimal real-time business operations to produce and deliver innovations for the highest customer experience. In parallel, using the original 3D models created by design and engineering, marketing can reuse and prepare the assets to promote the new consumer experience such as print advertising, social media, web configurator, and TV commercial. The 3D Experience Platform is a business experience platform that provides an innovative environment for companies looking to apply experience thinking, from engineering to manufacturing to marketing, to create differentiating consumer experiences. That's all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I hope that you will come the more and more numerous, especially you will reach to the people that are from the SO system today to know more about the 3D Experience platform. Thank you very much.